Instagram. Happy Monday. So here we are doing another live stream Q&A and I'll wait for a few minutes for everybody to get in here. So today, if you haven't seen, I'll just talk a little bit about what I've been up to this week before some people get in here. Yeah, so what I've been up to today, if you saw my story already, I was attempting to film three different video projects before this live stream started. Didn't quite happen, but I did get two of them done, so that's good, and I have some time tomorrow to finish up the third one, so all good. One of the pieces that I was recording, I did the audio yesterday, and then the video today was Song for Japan. It's, it's one of my favorites, so I was happy to actually record that. I've actually never recorded the solo version before, so I've done the quartet and the octet and all that, so it was really cool to record the solo version of one of my favorite pieces. And I'm thinking of doing some cool stuff with the video. Some of you may have known this, some of you may not, but I did live in Japan for four years, so I have all sorts of pictures and everything, so I was hoping maybe I'll, you know, work that into the video a little bit. Q&A session today, please feel free to ask any questions along the way. So we see from Jose Emen Guedes, sorry, Jose, if I pronounced your name wrong. He said, why did you choose to play? It's interesting. So why did I choose to play that piece? Honestly, I get to ask this all the time, like what are some of your favorite trombone pieces or some of your favorite trombone repertoire? And that is definitely one of them. So that's why I chose to play um, that piece. I, I really like it. And it also kind of has a special meaning to me. Like I said, I did live in Japan for four years, so I just feel a special connection with that place. And when the big earthquake and tsunami happened in Fukushima in 2011, I was on tour with Blast the following year, so in 2012, and when we went to Fukushima, we were actually the first show to kind of play um, in that city after the theaters and everything had been closed down for such a long time because of the earthquake and tsunami and everything. And then, so that was, that was a really crazy experience to go around the city and kind of see all of that. As well as when I was living in Japan, I made a lot of friends who had like lived through that experience and, and shared their experience with me of, of what the earthquake was like. And even those who were living in Tokyo could feel it. And so, you know, obviously that piece was written dedicated to, to that, right? To the relief fund for everyone who suffered from that tsunami and that earthquake. So yeah, it's just a beautiful piece of music. That I think it's a great solo for the trombone to play, you know, very beautiful. And like I said, it has a lot of meaning for me. So yeah. Hello everyone, thanks for being here. So I have some pre-submitted questions and then feel free to ask your questions along the way. So our first question comes from Simon Bradley and this was over on Patreon. So Simon is one of my patrons and Simon says, hi, I've been doing some recording with my brother who is a reggae songwriter. I've never played trombone on his music before. I play guitar also. I'm finding the gentle stabs that are a feature of reggae and ska to be the real struggle. Two main issues I'm having are breathing and just playing every single one of the stabs in tune. Um, it's something I expected to be easy, so it's been a bit of a surprise. Um, I don't know if this is something that others struggle with, but perhaps you could give some tips or make a video on your channel. Okay, so this is a great question. First of all, that's awesome, <laughs> Simon, that you've been doing recording and reggae music is like super fun to play. So yeah, that's great. I know what you're talking about, like these, these stabs. So a lot of times like the horns in reggae, they play those little like stabs on the backbeat, right? Like these shorter notes. So I think if you're struggling with the breathing, with playing shorter notes, the first thing you have to do is just breathe in time. Put on the track, you know, that you're gonna be recording with and start off, like maybe you can start off just breathing in whole notes first. So like before that stabbed note, right? You know, so like, right? So breathe in for four whole counts and really just like kind of, you know, stab your air there. I like to think of like two or like two. So kind of like a lot of tongue on the front and just let the air come out. Once you get used to how that feels, same thing, put on the track again. Now before that note, try breathing a little bit shorter. So maybe try three counts this time, right? So it's like, right? One. And once you kind of get that, go to two counts. Right? And then after that, go to one. That, that, that's kind of probably more what you'll be doing once you get into playing. You'll probably do the breathe in and then play. So it's kind of like this breathe, play. So one, two, three. 
Okay, something like that. And then also the reggae, like a lot of times you have like two of them, right? Right? Like mm, da, uh, da, 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 da. So making sure you're breathing before those, right? So like. So once you kind of get the timing of the breathing down, I think that that will help you. And that will also, so you mentioned pitch as well. So how do you get your pitch for those? Is kind of the same concept is you need to slow the notes down. If you have all these little stabs and short notes, it's not a lot of time, you know, to get the pitch. So you need to put on the track and then just play like whole notes, right? So make sure you can play those notes as whole notes in tune with the track and the chords and everything that's going on. And then kind of kind of the same concept. Once you get it good as a whole note, then go down to a half note, right? See if you can still get that same good intonation on a note that's half as long. Then to a quarter note, and then eventually down to like those little eighth note stabs or whatever you have going on. With these two things, kind of the same practice strategy as anything, right? Start slow and then and then get faster. Start from a you know a bigger place and then kind of narrow in. So Simon, I hope that helps you out. Um, let me just see if. We have any other questions in here before we move on? The next question comes from, again, sorry for the pronunciation, everyone. June H. Oliveira, 2018, and he asks, warm-up PDF. So yes, I do have some warm-up PDFs. They're over on my website in my store. Um, how you can find them from Instagram is if you just go into my link tree on my profile. It's in there. Just go to, I, I believe it says like warm-up with Lisa PDF and that'll take you over to my website where you can grab that. Also, if you follow that link over to my website, um, go to my store. So it's lisalizzrombone.com slash store. I have warm-up PDFs over there. I actually have one for free over there too as well. It was a video I did utilizing major scales to the fifth. So I do have one over there for free if you're interested you can go check them out the rest of them cost a few dollars oh wow someone from Uruguay is here that's really cool yeah everyone let me know where you're watching from or if you have any questions feel free to ask any questions along the way someone said the Wonder Woman wow thanks <laughs> I don't feel like Wonder Woman today on this Monday so next we have a question from let's see who's next Arturo underscore German underscore over here on Instagram he asks, what years did you go left, right, left in style? And in parentheses, BD, so Blue Devils. <laughs> so I'm assuming that means what years did you march Blue Devils? So for anyone who didn't know, I did march Blue Devils Drum and Bugle Corps a long time ago. <laughs> I marched 2004, 2005, and then 2006. So quite a few years ago, that's when I was over at Blue Devils. I did spend five years total doing drum and bugle corps. I also marched Blue Stars in 2003 and then Troopers in 2002. So I marched three different drum corps. Uh, so yeah, if there are any other drum corps people in here, let me know where you marched. Godfather, nice, yes, exactly. Your bud David says Godfather, nice. Uh, yeah, Godfather, that was a really cool show in 2006. Pro probably my favorite of the three years that I marched was, was probably that one, so that was a really cool show. All right, before we move on here, I almost forgot, it's my sister's birthday. So Kara, if you're watching, happy birthday. <laughs> okay, so next question is from L. Windeth over here on Instagram. Lesson for me. <laughs> all right, so if you want to take a lesson, same thing as everything else. It, all my information I have is over on my link tree on my profile. So just go over there and it'll take you over to my lessons website. I believe it says take Zoom lessons or Zoom lessons or something like that. And it'll take you over to my lessons page. You can fill out a form and, and get in touch with me. Other ways, if you're interested in taking a lesson, you can just send me a DM or send me an email at lisalizchrombone at gmail.com. So yes, if you want to take a lesson, just get a hold of me. It's not easy. Hello everyone, thanks for being here. If you have a question, go ahead and ask. Let me know where you're watching from. So this next question is from Kevin Baker over on YouTube. And Kevin asks, well, before I say this, I should probably say what video this was asked on. So last year I did some videos for the TMEA Allstate Etudes, so the Texas Etudes because I have some students from Texas and I wanted to do those videos and help them out and so I put them on my channel. All right, so it was on the TMEA I'll Say A2 number three video, which was from the Voxman book, page 25. He asked on that etude, as regards to tempo, when they are judging, is it better to play it a little faster, maybe not as cleanly or slower cleanly? Which would get a better score, do you think? 
right. Well, Kevin, I, I can't speak for the judges because I've, I've never been a TMEA judge before, so I'm not sure what they would say, but I can only speak from my personal experience, which is whenever you're playing anything, an etude, a, a solo, anything like that, you never want to let the tempo make you sound bad. So let's say you're playing an etude and, you know, they ask the, the tempo they want it is 120, right? That, that's what's on the audition list. Play this at 120. And so that should always be your goal. It should always be your goal to play it at the tempo that's being asked in an audition setting. However, like let's say you're shedding and you're practicing and you're just, you know, going up just a little bit at a time and it's audition day and you're not quite at tempo. Maybe you're not at 120, maybe you're at, you know, 115 or 110, you know, maybe you're just, just shy and you're just not quite there yet. And if you play it at 120, it sounds sloppy and, and hurried and all that. Me personally, I would much rather hear someone play cleanly if a, like a little bit slower than really slop through something at a tempo they can't handle. So th that's always my advice. You know, have that high tempo in mind. Try your best to get there. Try everything you can, um, you know, working the etude up slowly in increments. Like I always go in increments of 10, 10 clicks at a time, you know. So if it's 120, I'll, I'll start you know, slow, I'll start half tempo, 60, then go to 70, 80, 90, 100, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, that would be my advice. Play it slower, cleanly. All right, so we got people from Brazil here, from France, Amsterdam, Ecuador. Awesome, people from all over the world. Thank you for being here. <laughs> all right, Luis Angel Tenon says, hi, I really enjoy your videos. Thank you, Luis. Let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> All right, here we go. Next question. So this is from dotcom125 over here on Instagram. And he says, when are you and Patrick coming down to San Antonio and sitting in with my brass band? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know the next time I'll be in San Antonio. We were just there, I think in December, we have some friends that, that live down there. So um, we were there visiting some friends and then I do travel to Texas regularly, so. I'm sure I will be there someday again, and, and I'll let you know. I'd love to sit in and play with your brass band. Not a lot of live music is going on where I live right now, or, or really none in Washington, so I'd be super happy to come and play. I'll let you know next time I'm there. <laughs> All right, yeah, Brazil, Amsterdam, Colombia. Natalie says, I love your green screen. Thank you. So Natalie, uh, well, I am sitting in front of the green screen right now. Obviously, on my phone, on Instagram, it just looks like a blank screen. <laughs> So, but I was filming videos earlier, so I'm kind of already in the setup with the lights and everything. So it's just kind of easier for me to, to do this. And I'll, I will probably like post this video on YouTube later. So I might do something with it or I might just leave it. Yeah, I, I always have my setup kind of in this direction anyway. So that's kind of why I have it there. And Natalie also says, I hope you also come to Europe on a tour after the pandemic. I would love to go to Europe again. It's been a really long time since I've been there. So I would really like to, to go anywhere, to travel anywhere. I would, I would love to go on a tour. So I'm definitely hoping that those come back at some point soon. Again, everybody, thanks for being here. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them live and I will answer it for you. Okay, so back to the pre-submitted questions. So this is from your bud David on Instagram which by the way, that's an awesome name, <laughs> it made me laugh. Your bud, David. He says, valve trombone, yay or nay? That's a good question, David. I have actually never played on a valve trombone before, so I, I really can't answer that question. But I've seen my friends play on a lot of them and they, they look super fun. So I would definitely like to play on one one day and then maybe I'll have an answer for your question. Uh, let me know, anyone in here, if you've played on a valve trombone before or how you like it. Okay, Emma Marcos. Oh, she's in here live. Emma, you also asked a pre-submitted question. So Emma, I'll get to your pre-submitted question first. And it is, when are you gonna do another tickle challenge? So last year, Emma challenged me to do this tickle challenge video and I posted it on here. I also put it over on my YouTube channel as a short. I played the Jurassic Park theme with a pea bone and got tickled. Uh, you can go check it out over on YouTube. I'm sure you can find it. Emma, to answer that question, I, I don't know. I, pro I probably won't make another one, but I would like to see yours. I'll challenge you to make one. <laughs> and then Emma, your live question. Do you also play any other instruments? So yeah, I do play other instruments. 
My main instrument is the tenor trombone. I also play bass trombone, which isn't too terribly different. But yeah, so tenor trombone, bass trombone. I also play euphonium. I would say those are kind of the three main ones. So yeah, just kind of the low brass instruments. I also play trumpet, especially when I was teaching. There was a while when I was teaching a lot of trumpet lessons. I probably had more trumpet students than I did trombone students. So that's kind of just advice for any maybe trombonist, tuba players, low brass players out there. Or really any musician, the more kind of instruments that you can, you can teach, definitely the more lesson capabilities you're gonna have as a teacher. But yeah, that, that's probably it, just brass stuff. I did play piano when I was younger, but I've forgotten a lot of it. But my piano skills these days are just using my MIDI keyboard and, and making tracks and stuff. So I do utilize like those keyboard skills to, to make tracks, but I wouldn't, you know, I can't like play a piano concerto or anything. <laughs> and then actually the first instrument I ever played was, well, saxophone and then clarinet. I played clarinet for six years in elementary school, junior high school, and then even into high school, I was, I was still playing the clarinet. So I don't have one anymore though, I sold it, but I'm sure if I picked it up, I could, Play a few notes. <laughs> All right, let's see any more questions here. So short bearded daddy asks, which uh, Paul, thanks for being here. <laughs> when will we start seeing you upload to TikTok? Great question. So actually, I don't know, maybe you all can help me out with this. So actually I did create a TikTok account, but I really wanted it to be linked with all my other social media. That was something that was really important to me. If you guys follow me anywhere else, you know, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, my website, like everything is at Lisa Liz Trombone, right? So it was really important to me to like have that like handle or name on my TikTok. And I don't know what happened. I must've created like some other account from, from like a phone number or something. And the username it generated was just all these characters and numbers. And then I went back to like created, I think I tried to link it to my Instagram and like to be able to use the account and answer messages, I had to link a phone number, but it said my phone number was already linked to this other account and I, I just couldn't figure it out. And I was I was pretty dead set on like, no, if I can't use my name, Lisa Liz Trombone, like I don't wanna do it. So then I went back and like just canceled everything on TikTok, all these crazy accounts that I guess I set up. And I'm hoping, I think it was like 30 days or something, after 30 days, like they'll just wipe out and then I could like start the process over. I definitely do want to start uploading to TikTok. But again, I just, I've had a hard time with it. I don't know if anyone else has had that experience. <laughs> Cause you go to like sign up for it and it gives you like 10 different options of like start with an email, a phone number, your Facebook, your Instagram, this, that, and all you do is press a button and an account creates and I don't know, I'm TikTok challenged, but I'll get there one day. <laughs> so yeah, again, everyone, thanks for being here. Please feel free to ask some more questions. All right, Emma. Maybe you weren't ticklish at all, maybe. <laughs> yeah, so in that tickle video that Emma was talking about, I, uh, yeah, I'm not really that ticklish, so. <laughs> Louise Angel Tennant says, you may be able to share orchestral material for tenor and bass trombone. Well, I, I can't really like share stuff that I, that I didn't write because of copyright issues and all that, but there is this website, IMSLP, I believe, IMSLP, yeah, where you can go and they have like all this orchestral music as long as it's public domain. Um, so anything that's kind of older, you can go to this website and, and get anything. You know, you can get all the orchestral scores and the individual parts for your, for your instrument, for tenor and bass trombone. So I would definitely go check out that website if you're looking for orchestral music. The other one is actually from a colleague of mine, Seth Vaught. He has this great website called tromboneexcerpts.org. And that's the same thing. You can go over there. It doesn't have the whole symphony or the whole music, but it does have like music for the, the excerpt clips. So if you're looking for orchestral stuff, like definitely go check out that website. I'm sure you can search around and find a lot of great, great resources online. This message is from Felice Wan Yo. Wanjo, I don't know. Sorry guys with the pronunciation, I'm horrible. So some of this is in Spanish, but I think I can uh, maybe interpret this a little. I'm seeing like long bore, small, small bore. Like I, I, maybe that's like large bore and small bore trombone. I'm, I'm interpreting that. So yeah, I, I play on both uh, tenor trombones. I play on a large bore and a small bore. I, I definitely prefer playing on a small bore trombone whenever I can. Um, I play a King 3B. And that's definitely my favorite. Sorry if I didn't answer that correctly, but <laughs> I can't really speak Spanish, sorry.
How do you feel the change between them? I assume you're talking about like the different trombones and the different horns. So this is a great question. Um, everyone, anyone who does any like doubling with their instruments, um, especially it's common for like woodwind players, you know, to do all the different instruments or brass players to play a lot of the different instruments. So the way I kind of navigate the change between them is I never try to work on everything all at once. Like there's never enough time in the day. So something that has always kind of guided my practice is just working for the next gig or playing for the next gig. You know, if I have a gig or a recording session or, or whatever coming up where I'm playing bass trombone, you better believe like that's the horn I, I'm playing. That's the horn I'm putting the time in on. If I have to do euphonium, then I'm gonna spend time playing euphonium. If, if I'm recording on my small bore or have a lot of gigs on that, I'm gonna be playing that. If I have to do stuff on the large bore, I'll work on that. And eventually you'll just start to realize that as things kind of come around, you start to hit all the different instruments and that's always just been how I've handled the change is just working on kind of what's coming up next. I have had to do shows and stuff where I've had to double on instruments. For instance, I've played shows where the book was like trombone and bass trombone, or I've done shows where it was tenor trombone and euphonium. And when I had to play multiple instruments in, in one show or one setting, I, I definitely made sure I played on both of them every day. For instance, when I was doing trombone and euphonium, I would do my typical, you know, trombone warm ups on the euphonium and then the same thing. So I would kind of just do a lot of crossing over, making sure I could kind of play both music on both horns. And that really allowed me to kind of find the, the differences and what I needed to do and what I needed to change when I played the different instruments. Another thing I would do when I was going from trombone to euphonium, tenor trombone to euphonium specifically, I use the same mouthpiece. I know that's maybe not, you know, everyone would agree with that, but yeah, I use the same mouthpiece. So that kind of helped me as well. Good question. All right, Clay Sun Silva. Thanks to your YouTube channel. I improved a lot in the last month. Thank you so much. Oh, that's awesome. I really like hearing stuff like that. All right, this is from Arturo German. He asks, any case preferences for gigging versus travel scenarios? Yes, I have a case that I am absolutely in love with. It is a CC Shiny case by Eastman. When I was living in Japan, these cases were so popular. They were everywhere. They were at the music stores and they come in all sorts of different colors. I'm sure if you kind of scroll through my feed a little bit, I, I have pictures of it on there somewhere and I have stickers all over it. It's definitely my favorite case. They're super lightweight. They have backpack straps. They also, like I take it on the airplane, you can put it up above the airplane. It'll fit up there, no problem. And then also like when I was living in Japan, I was like not only, I didn't have a car. So it was like, I, I would have this backpack case on my bike, on the train, you know, I take it everywhere. So that's definitely my number one like case I would recommend. It's also, it's super lightweight too. Yeah, it's like across the room right now, so I can't like go grab it. But yeah, um, look up CC Shiny Case by Eastman. They're really cool. And like I said, a million different colors. Thanks everyone for being here right now. We are about done with all the questions that everyone submitted so far. So if you have another question, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, I'm gonna get going and carry on with my Monday. I'll just go ahead and wrap it up. Um, so thank you everyone for joining me today here on Instagram. I love doing these live streams and taking your questions. It's just a really fun way to, to get to know everybody and talk to everybody. So thank you for being here. Thank you to those who submitted your questions um, in the question box or you know on YouTube or wherever you submitted them. So please, if you ever have any questions in the future, feel free to ask me and I'll do another one of these in the future. If you missed the video, I'll probably post it over on YouTube later in the week. So you can catch it over there if you missed the beginning. But yeah, thank you everyone. Oh, we got one more. I knew that would happen. All right, um, so this is Miguel Bustamante. Bust I'm sorry, I can't pronounce all your guys' names. How do you think the changes between the registers? Good question. So obviously, you know, trombone has a really large range. So when you change the registers, the thing I like to think of the most is this concept of O to E. Like meaning when you're playing in the low register, your, your jaw is kind of dropped like this. <laughs> Don't worry, yeah. So I like to think of the concept O. Oh. So if, when I'm playing in the low register, like I'm thinking pedal notes or down in the trigger, like the lower you get, like kind of this O, oh, like really dropping your jaw and really opening up the, I don't know the technical term, but the oral cavity. Like, and like when you say O, oh, 
your tongue is pretty far down in your mouth too. And then when I play in the higher register, as I go higher, like if this was my tongue, I like thinking of E, where your tongue goes up higher, like E. So it's kind of like this, oh, e, oh. And that's kind of how I approach the different registers on the trombone. Higher register is E, lower register is O. And that really helps me kind of get from high to low. So that's definitely how I approach the different registers. I hope that answered your question. All right, so again, thanks for being here. Probably gonna end it on that unless anyone else has any other questions. Okay, thanks again, everyone, and I will see you next time. Bye.